Hello and welcome to another Zodian stream. How about that? How about that? But you didn't expect that shit to happen. Mm? So uh, today is uh, Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, the day of the sun. And it means today, according to the schedule, we're doing a game development in C++. How about that? How about that? But you didn't expect that shit to happen. So uh, let me see. So you can find the source code of the game that we've, de uh, bleh, we've been developing for quite some time uh, in here, in the description. So it's going to be a game source code. There we go. This is going to be game source code. And let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the game. Let's rebuild everything just in case. Um, dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how it, it looks like. So it's not a final look and feel. It's just like a programmer's art, uh, more of a technological demo. Uh, it's a custom engine in OpenGL and stuff like that. And uh, today we're going to continue developing this thing. So let's take a look at the uh, issue tracker just to see what we can do today. So yeah, we still need to develop the development console. We still don't have it. Um, and we could also work on in-game level editor, which is also quite useful uh, because um, um, these kind of tiles here, they're pretty much hard-coded. Um, and um, to change them, it's, it's kind of painful for me to change them because I need to go into the source code and place them uh, by their grid coordinates, which is kind of meh. It will be better if I could like go into some sort of like an editor mode and just click on those things and it will automatically create these styles for me. That will be goddamn fucking sick. Uh, so, and probably that's what I want to work on. So to be fair, like, I feel like I want to work specifically on that today. So, um, um, let's actually grab this issue and start working on it. I think that's a good idea. Uh, In-game level editor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think I already fetched everything, uh, all the latest changes that I introduced recently. Okay. So, and let's create a branch for the issue number 90. There we go. So, um, how are we going to approach this entire thing? So, first of all, we need to know the position of the mouse. As far as I know, we keep track of the position of the mouse in two different ways. Uh, we know the position of the mouse on the screen, on the window, uh, in integer coordinates. And we also know the position of the mouse in the world, which is uh, quite goddamn cool. So, maybe uh, I just want to see the mouse. Uh, in the world. Maybe we're gonna go into the game and when we render and everything, after we manage to render everything, we could try to um, render some sort of like a rectangle, some sort of rectangle um, at the position of the mouse. So uh, let me go to the renderer. So, and as far as I know, we have uh, fill AABB. Okay. So, and uh, let me see, let me see. Renderer. Uh, and AABB stands for Access Aligned Boundary Box, right? So if you never heard about AABB, it basically means rectangle. Uh, <laughs> ABB.org. <laughs> yeah, it has an official website. Yes, yes. Uh, access uh, Aligned. I, I saw it in the after suggestion, but Google trying to be super, super smart. So yeah, essentially it's a rectangle, each axis of which each side of which I would suppose aligned with the axis, right? So um, let me show you. I'm going to start my pain. I'm going to start my pain. Uh, wait a half of an hour because it's written in Python. And uh, so you have axis in here. So and something like this would be considered an AABB because its sides are aligned with the axis. Uh, something like this probably wouldn't be considered uh, AABB, even though it's a rectangle, right? So this is a rectangle, but its sides are not aligned with the axis. So, sorry. So the main difference is that this kind of rectangles, to represent this kind of rectangles, you need to store uh, each individual point, right? So you need to store each individual point, or maybe, yeah. Uh, so you need four points, right? 
In here, you only need one point, uh, which denotes some sort of a position if you if we're actually talking about OpenGL coordinates, right? So it's going to be like this. So this is going to be the position and uh, the size. So in that case, size could be represented as another vector. So in the case of ABB, you need two points, uh, right? So this is a regular rectangle and this is AABB, AABB, right? So, and I suppose a regular rectangle could be also represented as AABB plus its rotation, right? Um, so it could be also AABB uh, plus its uh, rotation. But a rotation is not enough because you also need to know the rotation around which pivot, right? Uh, for example, it's going to be a rotation around this pivot. So that means you need a pivot uh, plus pivot. And you're going to end up with four points anyway. That's very interesting. So we're going to get two points to represent AABB, right? Because the first point is going to be the position and the size. Uh, the second one is going to be rotation. But rotation is not necessarily a point. It's just an angle. Uh, and the pivot is going to be another point. You still have to have a lot of information just to represent this kind of rectangle, right? But to represent this one, when you know that uh, sides are aligned with the axis, you only need like two points or something. So basically, you can the representation of AABB is much smaller than the representation of a general rectangle, right? So that's basically what it means. Um, and uh, here, uh, our renderer is capable of filling AABB, right? So, and to create AABB, we need to construct something like, uh, let me see, so we have a math module, all right, we have a math module, and if I take a look at the structure AABB, so it has a constructor, it allows you to construct AABB from its position and the size. Uh, so its position is located at the mouse world position, right? But I also want to have the rectangle to have a particular size, right? So let's actually introduce something like maybe uh, mouse cursor size, right? It's going to be mouse cursor size. And that means I need to shift the position of the um, of the AABB to yeah, yeah. So basically, what I need to do in here, I need to subtract v2 uh, cursor size. And after that, I need to construct the size. And because of that, the size of the mouse is going to be two sizes, right? So we're going to multiply that by two. Uh, there we go. We constructed AABB of the mouse. Right, there we go. So the next thing we need to do in here, we need to represent the shade. Right, so the color is going to be something like mouse cursor, uh, cursor color, right? And then we have to take a uh, UV coordinates. UV coordinates are basically coordinates of the texture. How are we going to texture that specific cursor? So right now we're not going to put any texture in there, even though we could. I mean, we technically could. Let's do that, I know. <laughs> Let's find a cursor texture. <laughs> uh, open game art. <laughs> Let's, Let's just, just find something like random uh, and just put it in there. <laughs> uh, why not uh, cursor, right? Uh, that looks good, I guess. That looks familiar. Dwarven cursor. It's something like from the Heroes of Might and Magic or something, I don't know. Pizza! I like pizza cursor. <laughs> and I also like the question, right? Look at that. Pizza cursor? <laughs> this is perfect. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. I want to I I have a pizza cursor. Yes, yes. Uh, so it's it's for development anyway. So this is a cursor for development. So it's not going to be in the final game or anything. <laughs> But I love it. It's so, so beautiful. Such a cool idea. Okay, so uh, let me put some like credits in here. Uh -huh. So is it in the in the rewrite? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the pizza cursor. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so then I'm gonna take the textures, right? So and just download this entire thing. So pizza slice, pizza. There's two pizza slice PNGs. Why there's two? Some of them is 38 kilobytes, another one, probably different size. Yeah, this is probably different size. Okay, so, and let me put this into, I think, eh, 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 ah, panic attack. Okay, um, where is the pizza? Pizza, perfect, 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 perfect. 
Perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right, so, and we have a special configuration, right? So this is the pizza slice, and I'm gonna just put it assets, textures, uh, pizza slice, and so this is one, this is 12, so that means the texture have 11th index, which is not particularly convenient, um, but I mean, yeah, you, like referring to textures via indices is not particularly convenient, but I didn't have time to implement a better system where you could refer to textures via, um, I don't know, something like an ID, a human readable ID, but I'm gonna implement that a little bit later. All right, so, um, yeah, it's gonna be automatically added to the Atlas, uh, and in the Atlas, <clears throat> mm, we would have something like, yeah, we'll have to get the UV. Uh, so Atlas, uh, get UV. And in here, we're gonna have a UV index. So mouse cursor uh, texture. Yeah, that's what we're gonna have in here. So it's gonna be mouse uh, cursor texture. Uh, I've got a message, just a second. Mm. Okay. Everything's fine. It's just a spam, nothing special. So, and uh, what kind of program we're gonna render it with? I suppose we're gonna be rendering like with a regular program, but I don't remember the name of that program. Uh, so I think it should be called something. Yeah, I think it's called regular program asset. Okay, so let's actually put it in here and there we go. We are officially rendering the cursor. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. We'll see, we'll see. So let's try to rebuild the entire thing. <clears throat> so it's gonna build SH. Uh, and uh, we don't have any of those things, right? Because I was referring to constants that don't exist yet. So we're gonna add them to the configuration. So it's gonna be assets, vars, conf. Uh, so what do we need in here? Mouse cursor size. Uh, let's set it to 100, right? So it's gonna be 100. The next thing we need to do is a mouse cursor color. Uh, since we're using a texture for it, color probably doesn't matter. So we're gonna just set it to white. Okay, so it's gonna be white color because this is the color that is usually multiplied by the texture, right? So it doesn't really doesn't really matter that much. So in the mouse texture itself is going to be an integer. Do we even support integers? I don't remember if we support integers. If we don't, we'll have to add them to the configuration. And the texture is gonna be 11. So let's actually see if we do support integers in here. Um, oh, okay, so this one has to be a color. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, so I think we support integers. Um, narrow conversion. Mm. Narrow conversion, narrow conversion. Mm, I don't really understand what the hell is going on in here and why is this a narrow conversion? Oh, yeah, because it's a long reeling. Mm. Ah, yeah, it's an integer. And uh, here we accept size t or something. Okay, so let me actually like force it to be size t. Or maybe since it's a C++, I'm gonna be using like static cast or something, static cast. Uh, and this is gonna be size t. Sure, why not? Uh, let's put it like this. All right. Is it gonna be working? Is it gonna be working? Okay, it worked, beautiful. Nice, finally. Well, it kind of worked, but it's a wrong texture. Uh, okay, but since uh, we have all of that stuff in the configuration, I should be able to quite easily change all of that stuff. All right, so I'm gonna go to the vars. First of all, I think the size is too big. Let's actually make it a little bit smaller. So it's gonna be like 50. Uh, there we go. So now it is way smaller. Uh, and by the way, you can change the color now. Um, for instance, uh, I wanna make it like green. Right, and basically because of that, the uh, cursor texture is going to be multiplied by the oh, by, by the color that you provided in here. That's actually pretty interesting. So it's affected by the camera, huh? It is in fact affected by the camera. So to make it not to be affected by the camera, probably, uh, well, yeah, I'll probably have to first of all draw it with a screen program, and. Using a screen coordinates of the mouse, that's probably what I have to do. But I mean, it's fine, I guess. I guess it's fine. But I mean, it's not really that fine because uh, if you zoom out, I wanna still be able to see the cursor. But again, eh. So anyway, uh, let's go back to 
this thing and let's try a different texture now what about texture 10 so this is the texture of the, <laughs> of the player uh is it 12 uh yeah it is 12 okay but the problem is that it's flipped around right so this is the main problem it is in fact flipped around and look at that it has a it has a shadow and it's properly rendered look at that that's actually pretty cool so the the cursor has a shadow huh that is very very interesting actually i like that um okay so let me actually try to flip that entire stuff um mm -hmm. so this is the mouse texture and after we got the uv coordinates we can actually try to flip it vertically all right so we flipped all of that vertically and how is gonna look like uh hopefully that will look okay i just forgot that i don't restart the application after rebuilding right now so let me actually quickly do that <sighs> all right and it looks nice i suppose right so you have pizza and you know precisely the position of the of the mouse so and this is precisely what we can use in here uh yeah it's kind of it's kind of fun it's funny how it's following the yeah. huh. strange enough it's not really it's not really staying on the cursor on the screen so there's some sort of a lag between the actual position there and huh that's very interesting but uh maybe i will instigate that a little bit later uh but anyway so we have a pizza slice cursor um mm -hmm. pizza slice cursor so this cursor has a bunch of problems uh, first of all uh, mm, the ratio of the cursor texture is not uh, preserved right because we're using just yeah it's, it's not preserved whatsoever we're just using mouse cursor and basically it becomes square right it essentially becomes square uh this is one of the problems um the size of the cursor texture depends on the zoom uh, so that means it has to stay always on the screen um, and there is another problem is that mm, I didn't even know I didn't even know what to say so you see uh, as we move around I think the like the the pizza cursor like keeps upsetting from the actual uh, native cursor. You, you can clearly see that. If you like look at, look at the pizza, right? Um, so maybe I can actually do it like that. So I'm gonna zoom in. And as, as you can see, the pizza cursor just sort of like lags behind the, the native cursor, right? So it's just like lags behind it. And that's kind of weird. I don't know what's causing that, but this is something that we'll need to investigate um so maybe this is because we're taking the screen coordinates and keep converting them to the world coordinates every frame and because of that it sort of lacks one frame or something i don't know what exactly is going on in there all right so um okay the uh cursor uh lags behind the native cursor right so here are the problems that we have with this particular approach uh, <clears throat> so which one do i want to tackle first i think the easiest one would be this one so essentially instead of using the regular program you have to use the screen program uh, let me see uh, regular program just renders everything inside of the world and hmm that is very interesting uh, so, ah, I didn't introduce it. That's what's interesting. <laughs> I thought I had a version of a regular program that basically does everything the regular program does, but renders on the screen inside instead of in the world. Uh, that's what I thought I had, but apparently I didn't implement that. I was thinking to implement that, but I never actually implemented that. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Maybe this is what I will have to implement at some point. So renderer CPP, if you take a look at the regular, 
Um, triangle camera. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Hmm. Maybe that's precisely what I need to do. Okay, so let's actually introduce a, a couple of shader programs that actually um yeah that actually render on the screen but before i can do that uh i want to make a cup of tea i didn't make a cup of tea right before the stream and now i'm struggling a little bit so well, let's make a small break all right so let's quickly add some shaders how about that how about that so we have a triangle camera do we have a triangle um Triangle screen, I think that's how it's going to be called, right? So shaders, uh, here's the vertex triangle camera, okay? So uh, what this thing does, it essentially projects everything to the um, to the world. So let's copy paste this entire thing and introduce triangle uh, screen. And it's going to be vert. Uh, triangle screen, and we not, we, we won't we won't care about the camera position and the camera zoom uh, and here we're only going to apply the screen uh, projection right it's going to be uh, almost typed void <laughs> okay back to uh, screen projection screen projection um, and it's going to be just this kind of position right and what we're doing here we take the position Right, we multiply it by two and we divide it by the resolution and that way we are projecting all of that into the screen. So this is screen projection. So, and I'm gonna replace uh, the camera projection with the screen projection. Mm -hmm. uh, JLSL is so inconvenient. So some other modes like C mode, right? Uh, C mode. If you have something like a screen projection, right? So the tokenization in this specific mode will recognize this as a separate word. So if you want to jump between the words, you can actually jump like this and it's pretty convenient. The GLSL mode does not recognize uh, underscore as a separate sort of like thing. And if you try to jump by word, it jump by the whole the whole thing, which makes it kind of inconvenient for me to jump to like beginning of the screen as I would like do in here, right? And just put N in here. I have to like then awkwardly go in here. So JLSL mode just like, maybe I need to fix that. Uh, who, who actually developed JLSL mode? Mm, maybe I can do that. Mm. JLSL mode. Do, do, do they accept pull requests? They don't have any pull requests. Uh, and all the pull requests are accepted. Uh, okay. So, and are they active? They don't seem to be active uh, uh, on GitHub, unfortunately. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just need to fork it. But it's really inconvenient. Anyway, so let me go to uh, to the renderer add, and, and add another shader. Right. So here we have... Um, triangle camera vertex shader uh, and let's introduce triangle screen uh, vertex shader right so let's try to recompile this entire thing and follow the compilation errors uh, yep 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 okay so what do we have in here the amount of shader assets have changed okay so uh, where's the triangle camera uh, here is the triangle camera and in here I'll need to set screen triangle screen and this is the screen and there we go. So after that, this thing should compile. Um, and of course, I forgot a very important thing. Uh, I forgot to update this counter. Discounter. Discount. Uh, Render HPP. So uh, I suppose the next thing I want to do here is introduce something like screen program, right? So it's going to be screen program asset. Uh, and there we go. So that will also cause the compilation errors. So, uh, uh, regular program, uh, screen program asset. And this thing is going to simply use screen uh, vertex shader, but the regular texture color fragment shader, right? So, and of course, I need to increment that four to five. Now we have five programs. 
Mm -mm -mm. And cool. So if I go back to the game, right, so now I should be able to render the cursor on the screen instead of uh, the camera. Okay, so let's quickly uh, quickly see what's gonna happen. If I run this entire thing like that, uh, here is the cursor, uh, right, and uh, I'm replacing it with the screen. But the thing is, the position of the mouse now uh, has, has to be in the screen coordinates. Um, and as far as I know, it has to be in OpenGL screen coordinates. Um, in OpenGL screen coordinates. In OpenGL screen coordinates are uh, minus uh, half of the width plus half of the width minus half of the height plus height of the height. Um, so yeah, we'll need to do a conversion between two coordinate systems yet again. Uh, classic OpenGL move. So this is OpenGL. Uh, like this is OpenGL, it's going to be like this, minus uh, half of the width, plus half of the width, uh, plus half of the height, right? And this is minus half of the height. And I'm pretty sure the mouse is in those other, in the screen coordinates, and screen coordinates basically uh, something like this, right? This is where you have zero, this is where you have zero in OpenGL, and this is the full width, and this is the full height. Right, uh, let me confirm that uh, we have mouse specifically in this sort of coordinates. Let me confirm that. Um, so it should be something like mouse window. Yeah, there we go. Here's the mouse window. So we won't be able to just easily plug it in. So hmm, if I just take the mouse uh, window and basically cast all of that into the float, or maybe specifically GL float, uh, it's gonna look very, very awkward. It's gonna be constantly offset and stuff like that. Um, also, our shaders may not compile <laughs> because we never actually run them because the shaders are compiled in, in runtime. Uh, yeah, as you can see, there is like <laughs> uh, the uh, vertical things are opposite, right? And there is an offset there is a huge offset in here. Uh, the offset could be actually fixed quite easily, I think, by, you know, offsetting everything properly. Um, let me see, so this is the window cast. Uh, maybe I should introduce something like uh, cons auto mouse uh, screen. So we're gonna have window coordinates, then screen coordinates, and then world coordinates. I think I remember, vaguely remember that I already did that. Okay, so mouse world. Okay, so window to viewport. We have a special function that can convert. Oh shit, that's actually quite convenient. So I already have a function that performs this kind of transformation. Yes, okay, so I need to do window to viewport. Let's quickly use that. Um, all right, so it's going to be mouse screen, um, mouse window, here it is, okay, so it means I should be able to do something like this, window, mouse window, all right, there we go, I think it might actually work, I think it might actually work, let's rebuild this entire stuff, build the sage, there we go, mm, and, uh, there is still offset. Mm -hmm. There is still offset, but at least uh, the y axis is not inverted, right? So there is this offset, but the y axis are not inverted, and I can already can already work with that at least. Um, all right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So let me see how this entire thing is used. Uh, so then we take a viewport to the camera. So viewport, and this is where the offset is actually done. Oh yeah, because it's a viewport. I see, I see, I see. So and I suppose we can just steal this specific offset in here. Right, we can steal this specific offset in here. Uh, okay, so let's actually go in here and this is a viewport, and here is the offset. All right, maybe I can grab this entire stuff and replace it with a mouse screen. Right, this one's going to be const auto mouse screen, 
and here is what I wanted to have. Mm -hmm. There we go. I think it's yeah, that's precisely what I wanted to have. Oh shit. And we automatically fixed uh fixed the problem with drifting around. Okay, so we actually killed two stones with one bird. That's actually perfect. You see now I think it's not floating. Uh, yeah, I think it actually stays fixed. All right, that's actually perfect. I love that. I love that. Um, okay, so that means we automatically fixed this thing um, and this thing. Okay, so we only have a problem with the ratio of this stuff, with the ratio of the texture. So we need to remember, we need to restore the ratio. We need to restore the ratio. Where can we get the original sizes of the textures i think they are still stored in the atlas right the atlas can give you uv coordinates um but can you give you the original size maybe we can get something like yeah a avb um size t because as you can see it stores the original oh if you look at that here's uvs we don't store the original sizes of the textures. We only store their UVs. Oh, shit. Okay. That's very interesting. But I mean, maybe we can... Oh, yeah. UVs probably... They probably don't store the original ratio. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay. So that will require, um, you know, implementing something. Uh, a, a, B, uh, size T, get size, All right? Um, well, I mean, the size could be just a vector too, right? It doesn't have to be a rectangle. And then here we're gonna accept the index, right? It's rather a texture index. This is a texture index. Why did I call it UV index? This is not a UV index. This is a texture index, excuse me. Right, and we'll need to implement this entire thing. All right, so let's go into the Atlas. All right. uh, Atlas, and there we go. Mm, 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 mm. So this is going to be texture index. Of course, you should not forget to boundary check this entire stuff. Mm. Uh, so sizes, uh, data, texture, texture, index, uh, unwrap. There we go. So, but we don't have sizes in here. That's the problem that's the problem uh, so if I go in here maybe I can introduce something like dynamic array uh, v2 size t sizes right so we can introduce that but um, it's not initialized anywhere so we need to go into the function that loads the um, the atlas from the configuration and as we push into uvs right as we push into uvs we also should automatically push into the sizes, right? So sizes uh, is going to be comprised out of this stuff. So this is the original sizes of the textures, right? W and H. And uh, along with pushing UV coordinates, we're also pushing the sizes. And as you can see, W and H are integers. But for some reason, in, uh, in the dynamic array, I chose size T in here. So I think I could need to change it to int. Uh, and Atlas uh, CPP, this I think also has to be int. Uh -huh, there we go. So now I'm capable of getting the actual sizes uh, of the original textures in pixels, and I can use that to restore the, uh, the ratio and whatnot. <laughs> to restore the ratio. So how are we gonna set up the ratio? Mm. So we can use the ratio as how to say how to say that right. So we have width and height. Right. So here is the width, here is the height, and 
width over height is essentially going to be percentage of width in height right percentage of width in height so and because of that uh the actual you know sizes the actual dimensions are going to be so you will have to pick the height right so this is going to be the like aspect a you'll have to pick a particular height mouse size and this is going to be your uh your h and then you take the h and multiply it by a and this is going to be your actual rectangle your actual rectangle so that's how it's going to go i suppose mm -hmm. i suppose i suppose all right so let's try to implement this entire stuff I'm going to go into the game uh, and in here, so here is UV coordinates, I take the mouse uh, texture, right, so this is the mouse texture, mm -hmm. and then we're flipping this entire thing vertically. Um, let me do the following thing, um, const cursor UV, right, cursor UV, uh, and I'm going to just save this entire stuff uh, right here. So this is the cursor UV. Uh, and then we can have something like cursor size, uh, where I'm going to be doing the same, the, pretty much the same thing, but instead of get UV, I'm going to get the size. Uh, and we're also using the mouse cursor texture just to preserve its um, aspect ratio or whatnot. So, and after that, I want to have something like cursor aspect, uh, cursor size x divided by cursor, um, cursor size w. But both of them, x and y, are in integers, so we'll have to convert them to floats first. So this is going to be like this. Static cast uh, float. There we go. So you have a cursor aspect. Um, now, so this is the position of mouse screen, and this is the cursor size. So we need to construct the cursor size. So it's going to be cursor. Um, this is a cursor texture size, right? This is a cursor texture size. Uh, but now I need to construct the actual cursor size. Uh, so that means I'll probably have to rename the cursor size into cursor texture size. Okay, uh, cursor texture size. And this one is a cursor texture UV. Uh, texture UV. Cursor texture UV, cursor texture size, uh, then aspect. And then we're going to have the, an actual cursor size, which is essentially V2. Um, and we're going to be using mouse cursor size um, and multiplying only the first one by the aspect and the second one is going to be mouse cursor size. There we go, we have a mouse cursor size. So now we have a mouse uh, screen and we are subtracting cursor size uh, but divided in half. Uh, right. And then we we'll just use cursor size. There we go. Uh, so mouse cursor size okay this one is rather interesting so this is an in integers so that means I'll have to cast it to uh, a float right cast it to a float and then I'll have to multiply it by v2 um, cursor aspect cursor aspect one there we go this is how I'm gonna do that uh, I'm not sure if it make it shorter but at least I try it so here's ABB. So we have a, uh, the position of the mouse on the screen. Uh, it's on the screen. Then we take the half of the cursor size and then the full cursor size. And this is the ABB of the cursor. Then we provide the mouse uh, cursor color. And then we have to provide the UV coordinates for the specific texture. And uh, there we go. Uh, I think we rendered the cursor correctly, preserving its ratio and so on and so forth. Um, I wonder if it's going to compile. Let's, let's find out. Mm, it compiled and that's actually pretty cool huh okay it it actually preserved its ratio but the the, the mouse is, is too small to actually see that all right so let's quickly do that mm -mm -mm -mm. i wonder why it became so small though uh varsconf so 
the size is gonna be let's let's make it 100 uh, there we go uh-huh it's 100 what about why is it so small though um all right well this is probably because it's on the screen yeah, yeah, yeah. on the screen is just but yeah there we go so the aspect ratio is preserved and everything is looking fine i like that i like that that's pretty poog but i actually want the tip of the pizza to be the pointer that you click at click with rather so that means we need to upset the rendering of this entire thing um slightly diagonally uh let's see how we're gonna do that let's see how we're gonna do that and <laughs> so here is the mouse screen mm -hmm. mm. actually i'm surprised that it worked like that mm. um oh okay i see now <sighs> Mm -hmm. So here is the mouse position, and we subtract in the size, and then we construct an ABB starting from here like that, right? So, but what I need to do in here is I probably have to take the full height in here, uh, right? Full height in here, and zero in width, and then construct the thing like that. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that means I need to subtract something slightly different. Um, I'm going to be subtracting zero of the width, but the full height. Yes, that's what I'm going to I'm going to be doing. Um, mm -hmm. And it worked. Look at that. So now, if I'm going to be clicking, uh, I'm going to be actually clicking with the tip of the pizza. Uh, that is goddamn perfect. Yes. I spend 40 minutes <laughs> on making my pizza cursor perfect. Yes. It was goddamn worth it. Anyway. <laughs> this is the perfect cursor. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, nice. I wonder if this kind of math could be abstracted away because it feels like very useful in the future where you would want to grab a texture, right? You want to grab a texture, but then you want to provide the size of that texture and also preserve the uh, aspect ratio of that texture. So it would be kind of cool to have like this as a separate function because I can see myself using it quite often, especially if you want to render something on the screen especially if you want to render something on the screen so essentially we can put it into the atlas right uh, let me find the atlas mm, and here is going to be a function that returns aabb mm -hmm. i don't know what this function is going to be called right something related with the size right uh, we're going to be accepting the texture index right texture index and uh, a particular size Mm. a particular size mm -mm -mm -mm. so the size is going to be float right so and here we take the size the aspect and we construct a new size of it we can at least um extract these three lines into a separate function at least these three lines um yeah Mm -hmm. because we don't really need neither texture size nor aspect we don't need none of these things um which is fine i suppose right all right let's go ahead and do that so it's going to be atlas cpp mm, so Atlas HPP, it's going to be app size. It's a temporary name. I don't know how to call it. It's just some something like full size, right? It's going to be full size. Uh, quite often, I want to make a function, but I have no idea how to call it. Because naming is the hardest problem in the programming. Ah, yeah. That's what people say. 
Mm, okay. Um, so here's the atlas. We get the size of a particular texture, right? So here's the texture index, right? And we get the size of this entire thing. Then uh, we're calculating the aspect. Um, okay, so I might as well actually uh, rename this to just size, right? Size, get the size. And then we are basically converting both of them to the float. Might as well, do I use size for anything else? Okay, so I might as well actually cast this to float right away. So it's easier for me to just do something like this, right? So we're casting it to float right away. And there we go, here is the aspect. Uh, I can just call it aspect. Um, so then we have, okay, so this one is the size. We should call it scale, I think. Um, scale. All right. And in here, we're going to be using <clears throat> the scale. All right. Here is the scale. Um, but is it really a scale, though? Mm, so we're going to cast a float. And then we're using aspect. And then just one. So in case of a scale, it's already float, so we don't have to do that. And because of that, I can probably just do this uh, aspect scale. Uh -huh. And since this is the final result, I can just return it right away. Um, and there we go. That's essentially what I wanted to have as a function. And look how much simpler it is. First of all, I don't have to prefix it with cursor because uh, I'm not working with the cursor. I'm just working with abstract thing. So that means I can cut off on the naming of the variables. I can name the uh, variables shorter, which is nice. So second of all, I'm doing that with the, within the atlas. So I can cut uh, down on prefix in the atlas and stuff like that. Um, and just overall, it makes it shorter and more readable. Okay. Um, so here's the aspect, but I'm not sure if it's a scale, actually. I'm not sure if it's a scale, because we're, are, are we scaling anything? Uh, we're scaling the aspect, though. We're scaling the aspect. Mm. Though, to be fair, this is more of a height, right? So I would say that scale is some sort of a height in here. Um, that makes sense. <clears throat> So, and because of that, uh, I can remove this entire stuff and then just say that cursor size in my particular case is going to be atlas uh, full size. Yet again, I don't know how to call it. Uh, and I have to provide the texture ID. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, something like this texture ID and the mouse cursor size. Right, and there we go. So I managed to compress that into a single line. And I could probably compress it even further if I um, do something like index, right? And just do it like that. There we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is going to be an index, and this one is going to be an index. Uh, and the reason why I have to do like static casting here is because our configuration, our uh, configuration file supports only integers, but the texture texture indices are unsigned integers. And I wonder if I can do the following thing. Can I introduce a new type into the configuration called texture, right? And it's going to have like type equal to index texture. So, oh my God, this is actually a pretty cool idea. This is actually a pretty cool idea. Oh my God. I really, really like that. Um, so let me see. So it's going to be Atlas, uh, HPP. Um, mm, 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 mm. So this is the index. Ah. And what's interesting is that by texture index, we can get like very different things in here. I should probably have like a special, yeah, I should have a special type, not an index, but something else. <laughs> yeah, that would be actually kind of interesting. That would be kind of interesting, but yet again, I don't know how to call this entire thing. Mm -hmm. So you can get UV coordinates, you can get the size, uh, but then you can get the scaled size. Mm, this one is height. 
I don't know how to call this function. So we take the height and we scale it by aspect ratio. So, and I just don't want to give it a very long name. To be fair, the only reason why we have this function, why we have this function, is because we needed to use it inside of full size. So we don't need to use it anywhere else. Which means if we fuse this function inside of the full size, we can rename full size into get size. Right, so that could be the trick. Why not? So let's actually fuse all of that together. Uh, right, so this is going to be that. Uh, here's the texture unwrap, and I'm putting this entire stuff in here. Uh, we're casting it to float, and there we go. So that's how we can do that. Mm, so get size. Right, and then you can specify a particular float, the, whatever float you want. Right, and it's going to be like scaled according to that specific float. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Atlas HPP, and this is going to be something like this. There we go. Mm -hmm -mm -hmm. Mm, that's actually pretty cool. And the indices actually check check out. I really like that. Uh, but it's completely coincidental, I suppose. And by the way, this thing is also constant because it's not going to modify anything. Uh, there we go. So this is going to be get size. Uh, and inside of the game, this is going to be just get size. And there we go. There we go. Mm -mm -mm. Texture is not a valid. Yes, thank you so much. This is why I spend so much time actually making like a type safe config because in, sometimes I make uh, I do things like that and I would probably spend a lot of time troubleshooting it if I didn't have this kind of check in place. Okay, could not convert float to aspect float. Okay, height, aspect, size t. So size is a float. So it means the result here is going to be float. A uh, height is a float. Uh, ah, this is because we have to return. Oh my god, this has to be the two. So the indices don't check out anymore. <laughs> right. Uh, makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. So this is going to be Atlas, HTTP. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's try to recompile this entire thing. Uh, 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 deduction, brace, initializing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Okay, so let's actually put this entire thing in here. Uh, I will probably have to keep the indices like that. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think I'm more or less happy with this thing, and I'm gonna put like a to do for myself to not forget to clean this stuff up. Um, so the thing I want to introduce in here is that introduce. Uh, a special type uh, atlas index instead of index aadb float right <clears throat> instead of index aadb float and also maybe it would be nice to have introduce a special uh, type in vars config uh for atlas index right so and you know what would be even cooler um is that it would check um at compile time that uh, you're having an incorrect atlas index in the vars configuration right since we know that the type has to be like an index the atlas index we can probably check that Right, so that's actually a pretty cool idea, but all of that is going to be for, for later, right? It's outside of the scope of what we're doing anyway. Right, so what we got in here? Um, so I suppose pizza slice cursor, but we... Uh-huh. Um, okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 90, make the cursor, uh, cursor look a bit better right so basically instead of rendering it inside of the world we're rendering it uh, on the screen right and it looks like a goddamn cursor 
it looks like a, like a good damn cursor. Okay, cool. So we have a cursor, and uh, the next thing I want to do, I want to be able to somehow place the tiles, right? Because uh, I need to be able to edit the uh, edit the level. Um, mm, 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 so I should not probably rebuild it. So I want to be able to just click in here, and that should create the tile. Um, let's see if we can do that. To do that, we need to handle the mouse events, right? We need to handle the mouse events. I wonder where we can handle them. So we have a handle event method, all right? And I'm gonna go in here, handle event. What kind of stuff do we have in here? We already handle mouse button down and uh, to shoot with the player and whatnot. Um, so we need to introduce mouse button up, but for what? We don't really need it right now. Um, okay, so let's, instead of shooting, try to see if there is like an actual tile under the cursor, right? And uh, try to modify that tile. Okay, so we have a special entity called tile grid. Um, and here uh, we can provide world coordinates and get yeah, we can get the actual tile. We can get the pointer to the actual tile. Uh, so we know that our mouse is in the world coordinates, right? It's in the world coordinates. And as far as I know, um, yeah, I, I can construct them like that. So this one is going to be world coordinate, mouse world. And there we go. That gives us the title, uh, the, not the title, tile. Uh, and in here, we have to not forget to check if it's not null uh, because the tile grid is actually limited, right? So if you accidentally click outside of the tile grid, this thing will return null to you, right? If tile is not equal to null, uh, right, only then we're going to try to do something with it. And what we can do with the tile, uh, struct tile, uh, you can, right now, we only have two kinds of tiles walls and not walls and i suppose one of the things we can do in here is just like take the wall and flip it right so that's pretty much it let's see if it's gonna do anything so do we already have like a simple editor in here uh okay so this has to be like a tile grid um all right let me see let me see okay um, yeah, we already have a simple <laughs> simple level editor. Look at that. Uh, and I, I can just place the tile. I can remove the tiles uh, and stuff like that. So that's that's actually pretty cool. Um, so thumbnail, thumbnail. Ooh. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> And it all, all check out. I wonder how, yeah, okay, so I can I can place tiles quite far away, as you can see. Um, hmm. I don't like that. Huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that's, that's very cool. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. I wonder how far away I can actually place the tiles. Uh, tile grid, what's the size of the tile grid? Uh, 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 I suppose quad rows. Oh, okay. So that means quad row. It's it's the size of a single quad, right? Tile grid is described in the size of a single quad. Uh, so that means we have four quads. That means the size of the whole grid is two hundred by two hundred. So that's actually quite big. Not gonna lie. So that's quite big. Uh -huh. I, also, I, I want to be able to actually draw this entire thing. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. Okay, that's actually very scary. This is actually very scary. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything in there? All right. Oh, okay. I guess, okay, so you can clearly see here is the, uh, the edge of the tile grid. So we reached the edge of the tile grid. You can place things in here. Right, you can place things in here, but on the next tile there's nothing in there. So we found the positive uh, edge of the tile grid. Okay, so uh, maybe we, we should actually go for the negative one as well. 
This void is actually kind of scary, not gonna lie. This is a very scary vo uh, void. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be that. For some reason, I really want to reach. Okay, I think it's somewhere here. Okay, I, I can clearly see that it's somewhere here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Da -da -da -da. There we go. So we reached the. Uh huh. Um, boom, boom, boom. This is the positive range. So this is pretty much the entire world in here. You can clearly see the entire world. Uh huh. Uh -huh. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah. Hmm. I really like this. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it feels like it's something substantial. I really like the fact that it's like something something really substantial. Uh, it looks better than this DL thingy. Um, okay. So we got that, uh, but we don't have different kinds of um, kinds of tiles yet. Maybe we're gonna introduce them soon. We'll see. We'll see. And I also want to be able to switch between the modes, right? Because sometimes you want to just be in a game mode, and sometimes you want to switch to the uh, to the developer mode. Right? So maybe that's precisely what we are going to have here, right? We're going to have some sort of a variable that says, are we in the development mode or we're not in the development mode? And in the development mode, we are going to introduce all, uh, we're going to introduce all of these like features and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing, do we want to include the development mode in the final release? Probably not. Oh, we have a special macro, by the way. Release. So if the release is defined, it basically removes all of the development feature, all of the uh, developer feature. Like for example, reloading config from a file, uh, and now there is no config anymore. The config is baked into the executable, uh, and so on and so forth. So maybe we're gonna do the same thing with the development tools and whatnot. Sounds uh, pretty cool. Right, so is our game even building in Redis? Let me check. Redis usually takes more time to build because we're enabling all of the optimizations, right? O3. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's done. Um, and if I run this entire thing, so it's going to be something release, right? Nothing, nothing really pretty much changed, right? But the only difference here is that you won't be able to automatically reload the uh, configuration files. You won't be able to do that. And I think you won't be able to even reload shaders as well. Uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and introduce a special mode for the developer. Uh, game HPP. So, what's this special mod going to be? Uh, Boolean. Um, is it going to be like a level editor or maybe a developer mode? Um, editor. Let's call it editor. Uh, so, and it, by default, this entire thing is going to be false. And on top of that, if not defined something. Uh, release right this thing is not going to be included okay so i don't want to include editor in the release of the game um right but if you want to have an editor you can just recompile the program with the debug build or something so it's, the game is completely open source you can find the source code of the game in the description all right so and in here i can put something like um i don't know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some sort of like editor mode indicates whether, uh, whether, how to spell whether the uh, editor mode is, uh, le the level editor mode is on, right. And here, what we can do in here now, um, so if 
we handle the events right if we handle the events uh, and if the editor mode right if the editor mode is on uh, we're going to be placing the tiles right so we are placing the tiles uh, otherwise we are shooting right otherwise we are shooting it's as simple as that and since by default it's going to be off because of the zero initialization rule uh, we won't be able to place any tiles mm -hmm. yeah okay oh it didn't work excuse me if editor then that otherwise shoot didn't you oh i'm running release okay <laughs> sure uh i'm running release okay so as you can see i'm just playing the game also i'm not gonna display the cursor the pizza cursor unless we are in the editor mode okay so that's basically what i want to do here if editor only if editor uh, then display this entire stuff otherwise don't display that all right mm -mm. So the, the pizza cursor is going to be an indicator of, um, of whether we are in the special mode. Also, I want to kind of like not show the cursor uh, in the game. Is there any way in SDL to hide the cursor? SDL hide cursor. There must be a way to do that. Show cursor. Okay. Uh, all right. It's as simple as that, apparently. Okay, let's go to here. Uh, and after we initialized the window, I suppose, um, I'm, we're going to just do a very simple thing here, right? I guess zero. And also, do we have a special checks for that? Uh, probably not. I don't know. Um, if this entire thing returned like uh, minus one, we're going to be panicking, say an SDL error, right? SDL error, SDL get error and we're going to be printing this error for example maybe on some platforms it's not possible to do something like this who knows who knows who knows who knows uh, okay so uh we have that and we don't have a cursor as you can see i still can see the cursor if i go outside of the window but inside of the window you are like just shooting the enemies and whatnot okay we need a special key that will toggle the editor mode right uh so let me see what we can have in here uh, toggle the editor mode. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So it's going to be game CPP uh, handle event. So this is going to be key down and I don't know something like what's usually for the editor mode. What people usually use for the editor mode? Uh, something like F three uh, maybe I, I don't know. Let's actually do F F three as the key key F three and this entire thing is going to be as simple as editor equal not editor we just toggled the editor mode okay let's try to uh, see if we can enter the development mode now all right so here is the regular game and then i press f3 and there we go i can now place the tiles and whatnot right so i can still control the player but um i cannot shoot anymore um, so an F3 is going to be that. Maybe when I'm in the um, editor mode, I should be freely move around, uh, detached from the player, if you know what I mean. Um, or maybe the player should actually go into some sort of no clip uh, mode, where I can just move around with a, uh, WASD um, and stuff like that. I don't know. And at any point, I can just toggle it back. And now I'm in mortal, in, in a normal game here. Uh, so it's funny how it's it's stuck now, right? Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, but again, uh, in the release mode, I don't wanna uh, have this kind of editor, right? In the release mode, I don't I don't wanna have this kind of stuff. So because of that, I'm gonna just try to build this entire thing with the release and see where it's gonna fail, right? Okay, so as you can see uh, in the release, uh, we don't have editor. So I guess I'm gonna do, be doing the following thing. If not defined something release, uh, we're gonna exclude all of that. And as we have more and more uh, keys related to the development, we're gonna put them under this uh, if and def condition, right? So, and they're gonna be removed in bulk. 
All right, so let's actually go through all of the compilation errors. And um, here is another one. Here is another one. And I wonder how it would be easy to sort of separate all of this entire thing. So the easiest way to do that is probably if um, def uh, something release. Uh -huh. And you also should not include that, but eh, eh, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. It would be better to like just have a completely separate case in here. Uh, if and if something release. Uh -huh. And then, otherwise, just shoot and if. There we go. So, while this entire thing is not particularly complex, um, it should be as simple as adding like this if and devs but as it becomes more and more complex maybe we're gonna move the entire like editor logic to a separate sort of structure and that structure could be excluded from the build like in in bulk like as a, as a, as a blow right so uh, we have this editor thingy and if you're in release just never include that thing right so yeah uh, right now, the editor is tightly integrated with the game, but at some point, as the editor becomes complex, it could be a separate thing decoupled, slightly decoupled for the game, having like a couple of connection points with the game, and we can wrap those connection points in, in this if devs uh, when we build in the release. Uh, I've never done anything like that before, but that's how, in theory, this works in my head, and I just want to check how it's going to work. We'll see. Maybe it will work, maybe it won't. Uh, another game developer. Something release. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna be doing it like that. Uh, there we go. And I think we're having a release build. Uh, all right. It'll be also kind of cool to indicate that we're in the bug build. Um, so you can use the development features. So build. Uh, okay, so if I run the release. Right, everything seems to be working. Yeah, everything's working. Right, cool. And now, if I try to build the uh, regular build, the debug one, um, I have to do that from the right place, of course. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, now I'm capable of going into the editor mode and everything's okay. That's actually pretty cool. So again, as I said, it would be kind of cool to have some sort of an indication that, bruh, you are in the debug mode, you can use these debug features and whatnot. So yeah, I think I'm gonna place some sort of like um, text on the screen saying like debug, like somewhere in the corner, like somewhere like a very, very small white text. Uh, and it's only going to be included if you are in debug mode, in debug build. If you're in release build, uh, we're not going to have any of this text. Um, so just something to indicate that I can use these features. Um, all right. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, don't include the level uh, level editor in the release build. All right, and I'm going to push that right into the repo, mate. Right into the repo. Cheers, by the way. Um, it's a little bit cold in here and I ran out of tea, so maybe I'm soon I'm gonna make a small break to make a cup of tea. Mm. Maybe I feel cold because I'm drinking a cold water. Mm -mm. And this apartment, by the way, actually have a pretty good thermal isolation. So if it gets cold in here, it stays cold for quite some time, even if outside is like, you know, plus 30. Uh, let me actually start Chaturina. Um, so what's the temperature today? Uh, weather, Nola Siberia. I think my boat is dead. Yeah, my boat is dead. Okay, it, but usually when it's dead, uh, I still can query uh, the current weather from the Discord, right? So let's quickly do that. Weather Nova Cybersk. Weather Nova Cybersk. And it's plus 24. Yeah, it's, it is plus 24 outside in Siberia, by the way. In Siberia. But it's still pretty cold inside because I have a pretty good thermal isolation because that's what you need if you live in Siberia. Right. Here's the thing about Siberia. Uh, people think that Siberia is like a snow desert. But in reality, the temperature in Siberia um, ranges from minus 30 to plus 30 throughout the year. 
So the winters in Siberia are extremely cold and the summers uh, in Siberia are extremely hot. And I also live uh, nearby the, uh, the lake. And so during the summer and hot weather, there's shit ton of mosquitoes in here. It's just like, oh my God, uh, they're eating you alive. And uh, this winter, by the way, we had minus 40. So <laughs> I don't know, the, the humans shouldn't live in here, to be fair. The humans shouldn't live in here, but here we are uh, living in here. So anyway, uh, what I was doing. Uh, don't include the level editor in the release build, and um, we need to extend the level editor, I suppose. Need to extend, we need to add more features in there. Uh, for example, maybe an ability to spawn an enemy on the click. Uh, right. Uh, and since we need to do that, uh, we need some sort of a way to switch between placing the tile and placing the um, uh, enemy. But before we do that, I just remembered what I wanted to do. Before we do that, we need to place a special text that we are in debug build. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I went on such a tangent, I forgot what I wanted to do. All right, uh, so let me see, let me see. So I'm gonna go to the game CPP and uh, it's gonna be something like render, 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 render. Okay, so here's that. Um, so this is the editor and if it's debug build, we also want to place some small text on the screen. How do we render the text? So we render it through a font uh, and I can just render this entire thing like this. Okay, so this is going to be font, uh, render text. Uh, I do have a renderer, right? And the text I want to render there is going to be just a simple word, debug. Uh, the position of this thing will probably depend on the screen, right? I want it to be somewhere in the corner um, maybe somewhere like in the right bottom corner, something like that. So that means the actual position is going to be V2. Uh, it is around, mm, 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 mm. um, W minus half of the height. Yes, that's the size. So it's going to be screen, uh, width minus uh, screen height. To be fair, we can we can do it like this. Uh, we can do it like this. So this is going to be screen size, const auto screen size. And on top of that, I'm going to automatically cast this entire thing into the float. There we go. So also, I want to wrap that in this thing. Okay, here's the screen size. Um, mm, I need to calculate the position. So to know the position, I also have to offset it by the size of the text. Uh, so let me put it like this. So it's gonna be text uh, and it's gonna be debug. Um, yeah. Debug label, uh -huh. debug label, there we go. So we don't have a way to calculate the size of the text just by the text, right? So maybe the thing we need to implement in here is something like AABB, GL float, uh, GL float, um, text size. And in here, we're gonna be actually taking that uh, size. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, it's going to be V2, uh, and we're also going to be accepting the scale. There we go. Yeah, that's what we need in here. Text size. You provide the text, you provide the scale, and it will give you the size, the dimension, width, and height of the text. So you can use that information to do the layouting on the screen. All right. So let's go into the font, CPP, and um, mm -mm -mm, render text. Okay. So it's going to be font. Uh, yep, 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 yep. So we have a character size in pixels, right? Uh, we have a character size in pixels, and we multiplied it by the uh, by the scale and whatnot. And we also have a character size. Character size in pixels is actually a vector. Okay. So maybe because of that, we can do something like this: character size in pixels. We multiply it by the vector scale, right? And also, we need to multiply the uh, width 
of this thing, so uh, the width of this thing, by the amount of character in the text. Uh, but we don't need to do that with the height. Height is going to stay the same. And this entire thing has to be casted into the float, of course. Otherwise, it's not the math is not going to check out. To be fair, we could simplify this entire step by actually uh, doing something like this. So this is going to be one, right? So here is the vector. And then you just cast in this into float. And that produces a slightly shorter expression, right? I think it's slightly shorter. You're constructing a vector of like size t and you're casting the whole vector into the float. All right, so I think that's going to be a little bit better. Uh, I think that's going to be a little bit better. I'm going to put it like that. And that's the thing I want to return. <clears throat> okay, looks good to me. So that's the function we're going to use to determine the size of this entire stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's go back into the game. Uh, into the game. Uh, render. Okay, 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 okay. So here's the screen size. Um, debug text then uh, auto debug size and it's going to be font text size um, and we're going to provide i forgot which one comes first okay first come te uh, come the text right so here's the text and the scale is going to be let's say debug text scale so it's going to be a special con uh, constant that we want to update mm. oh also another thing um, it would be kind of cool if debug text was part of the config. You know what I mean? Mm, so I could just go to the vars conf and just do something like debug uh, text and it could be something like string and I would say debug. So yeah, that would be actually kind of cool. I really like this idea. But we don't support strings yet, but we will. We will. We will, we will, we will. Um, okay, so maybe I'm gonna actually do it like this. Uh, to do vars conf does not support string type. Right. Um, so screen size. Um, I also know the debug size. So and we need to calculate the debug location because of that. We need to calculate the debug location because of that. Mm, what's going to be the debug location? Um, um, OpenGL coordinates actually screw up with my with my brain. So uh, let's actually draw the axis. Here are the axis. Here is the this. Uh, uh huh. And I suppose what we're essentially doing, we take this point, right? We take this point and we subtract the width of the text and since the text is drawn starting from this point upwards i think it's going to work out quite nicely all right it's going to work out quite nicely we could also probably add a little bit of the padding in here right some sort of a padding but that could be implemented like separately um all right so we need to introduce something like debug position. So this is going to be debug position. And debug position is essentially uh, screen size. Right, so here's a screen size. So how can we find this position, right? This specific position. This position in terms of width um, is full width. But height is in fact uh, minus half of the height. There we go. We find the position where it starts and we need to subtract the debug size, but only uh, but only width, right? Uh, only width. And to do that, we're going to uh, retain the width, but we're going to cancel out the height. So that's how we're going to work with all of that. Um, so we found, uh, yeah, we essentially found this specific position and this is where we can render all of that so it would be nice to add some sort of a padding right and how can we add the padding the padding could be essentially just subtracting minus v2 debug 
uh, text uh, padding, debug label padding. So it's going to be minus that and also debug label padding. And there we go, we calculated the position. Uh, all right, so now mm -hmm, mm -hmm, render text uh, debug position. Right. Next thing is the scale, uh, debug scale, uh, and then the color, debug text color. Okay. Mm, for the consistency. Debug text, debug position, debug scale, debug color. Uh, 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 um, all right, so that should be pretty much it. Um, let's go ahead and compile this entire stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, we don't have a deb well. I mean, let's put it like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, debug text scale. Uh, let's start with something very simple. Let's start with one. Right, initially it's going to be one. Okay, debug text padding uh, again. Let's start with something simple. It's going to be zero. And we can adjust all of that in runtime. In no time. <laughs> in runtime, in no time. Okay, so maybe for now it's going to be just red. Right, and then again, it can be adjusted. We just need to have something. Um, all right. So, aha, ooh, so this entire thing, are you telling me that this stuff is in size T? Okay, I can easily cast this thing to flow, sure, it's not that big of a deal, it is quite easy in fact. Uh, what else? Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. So, ah. Is there any special string literals for size t? Is that a thing I can do, or do I have to do something like one u? Uh -huh. uh, okay, because here is unsigned in and size t one l u. Okay, um, I'm actually quite curious. Uh, curious c plus uh, plus size t literal. Initialize the integer literal to size t. Uh, there's no such standard facility C99, so implement do have such macros. Um, oh shit! Okay. Ah, it's it's not a standard thing. That would be actually qu quite cool if we had like a Z thingy. Mm. There's no dedicated suffix Z in C++ you could create. Yeah. I mean, why would I do this? <laughs> Starting from C plus plus twenty three. Static cast size t. Okay, just in case. Whatever. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So. Can you see the debug thingy? Uh, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, you, you can't see shit. Uh, it should be somewhere in the in the corner, but I can't see it. Um, I wonder why. So this is... Okay, so here's the editor, and I can block this entire thingy, uh, which is nice, and then I, I go in here. All right, doesn't work. I'm so happy. I'm absolutely happy. Mm, so can we actually go into the debug mode in here just to see what happened? Uh, just see what happened. Or is the text, where the text is rendered? Where the text is rendered? Is it rendered with a font program asset? That's what it's rendered with. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just confirm that uh, all of these computations are correct to some extent, at least. So uh, I'm going to go to the GDB, so it's going to be something debug, uh, right? And I'm going to 
break uh, break something something is, is it called src something debug uh, is it something debug it's something debug game cpp um why can't i have that i'm i'm really confused um break some mm. yeah i need a break <laughs> just a second um 269 all right so there we go let's run it and uh-huh i think we already hit this entire thing so if i print debug text i mean it's it's obvious that's what it is uh next one debug size and uh debug size in pixels 35 by 9 looks good to me because it's long right print screen size here is the screen size uh all right and i think this is already where oh yeah okay i see this is already we have where we have a problem because the size the width goes from minus half of the width to plus half of the width uh and what i'm doing in here is yeah this one has to be like a half of the half of the width there we go debugging step debugging actually works step debugging actually works so it makes you like follow the logic that you're doing and then you find find the error um all right so this is minus half of the width and uh, in terms of height is just like minus half of the height that makes sense to me okay so let's try to recompile this entire thing and let's go mm, can i see anything i can't see shit. it didn't help all right so but that was the bug nonetheless right that was the bug nonetheless and we fixed it so uh hopefully because how how am i running it? i'm actually building this entire thing and then i'm running it okay uh, 269 okay break some something uh something game cpp 269 269 and then i'm running this entire thing uh-huh um okay so screen size makes sense to me uh-huh and uh, let's take a look at the debug position debug position is 925 minus 540 which makes sense to me this looks like a good debug position so maybe something wrong is going on within the render text okay so yeah we figured out uv coordinates and then we just fill aabb with the font program asset and what is the font program asset that's the interesting thing uh what is the font program asset um, um so as far as i know the font program mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's defined somewhere here so let's go into the renderer uh there we go it uses the regular camera Okay, what do they expect? It uses goddamn camera instead of screen. Okay, I was trying to render it in... Okay, so that means that that text is located somewhere in the world. Yet, uh, Okay, where is it? Uh, I wonder where is it located. Maybe we can even find it somewhere. Uh, it's going to be difficult to find because it could be also very small but we can blow it up uh in here so what if we scale it to like 50 we'll be able to yeah there we go now we see it inside of the world yeah, yeah, yeah there we go <laughs> uh that's cool that's pretty cool mm -hmm -hmm. Hmm. is that a thumbnail Probably. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the thing I want to do in here is I want to replace the camera in this thing with uh, the screen, which is completely identical to the screen program. Yes, maybe we should just remove font program asset uh, and just use always the screen program. Um, mm -hmm. 
So let's go to the renderer, right, the renderer HPP, and I'm straight removing font. It's not needed since we have like a screen program asset. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. So let's go to the compilation errors. Uh, this one is not needed. Mm, okay, so this one is for now. Mm -hmm. So screen, maybe this program has to be customizable uh, through a parameter in a function because sometimes maybe you want to render the screen on uh, the, the text on the screen or maybe sometimes you want to render it in the world depends uh, if we'll need to render it in the world I think then I'm going to add this parameter but not for now All right let's not try to jump ahead of ourselves and there we go so we've got some corrupted shit cool I really like that what the fuck is going on um oh it's probably because for a different program now it is using some some stuff because for the um, for the font we have to use a separate like ah that explains it wait a second um was there like a font i don't even remember assets uh, shaders, fragment, texture color. So we have an image, there's a gradient circle. All right, so let's actually find the program. Uh, uh -huh. Sync uniform, where do we sync the image? Image unit. Ah, that's why we needed the font, okay. I'm an idiot. We need to bring the font back <laughs> because it was a it, it was truly a different program because we needed to set a different texture unit because the the bitmap font is located in a completely different uh, texture. Okay, okay, I'm starting to remember. Let's go back. <laughs> Let's go back. Oh my god. Uh, so this is going to be like this, and because of that, in the renderer, what I had to do simply is just to replace the camera with the screen so maybe at some point we're gonna have something better we'll see if we're gonna have something better uh, we'll see well okay there we go now it is rendered on the screen that's precisely what i was trying to achieve uh now yeah, again it's, it's too big so let's actually try to adjust that let's try to fix that um where is my text uh where is my text vars conf so this one is gonna be what what if it's gonna be like 10 uh is that a good size uh maybe um maybe it could be even smaller than that yeah something like this and it definitely needs some sort of a padding so let's actually add five and um yeah i'm calculating padding incorrectly Okay, so that means I need to actually um, subtract width, but add height. Okay, I see. I see how it's going. I see how it's going. So in here, I'll have to multiply it by V2, and I'm subtracting width, right? So this one is probably going to be plus minus one, uh, but I'm adding height. All right, so that should be it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks all right, as you can see. So there's a little bit of padding in here. And if I'm just doing it like that, so yeah, cool. Uh, so vars conf, uh, and the padding could be like 20, for instance. Yeah, I guess 20 is all right. Uh, 20 is all right. So, and yeah, I can set this stuff in here. And now if I build the release build, right? So this one is going to be released. It's going to take some time because, you know, all the optimizations and stuff like that. Uh, cool. Uh, release. 
so we don't have anything in release and we cannot open uh, the uh, level editor and everything looks okay. All right. Um, add. Um, mm -mm -mm. Debug uh, label on the screen in the debug build. All right, so what do we got in here? Mm. So what's gonna be the next step? Um, we have like 20 minutes left. So I suppose within those 20 minutes, I'm going to just add an ability to switch between the things that you're doing in the level editor. Specifically, uh, if you are, well, I mean, I need to run the debug build, right? So, um, Right. If you switch to the level uh, editor, you can place the blocks, but then I want to have some sort of like, um, how to say that, buttons in here, some sort of buttons which I can click and switch to, for example, spawning enemies. Right, right now the enemies are, <laughs> are spawned automatically uh, and uh, maybe I want to spawn, spawn specific enemies in specific places for the level editing purposes, right? So. <laughs> Anyway, before I'm going to do that, I want to make a cup of tea because it's a little bit cold in here and um, I see you in a snap. Um, all right, welcome back to back. So uh, let's uh, go with um, what we need to do in here. We need to add additional thing. So we need to introduce uh, sort of like the notion of the editor brush or, or editor tool. Um, so speaking of brushes, um, I should not forget to add a to do for the thing I wanted to do. <laughs> uh, essentially, the thing I wanted to do is have an ability to sort of draw the tiles. You see, when I hold uh, the mouse, nothing's happening, but I want to be able to just draw the tiles. So let me quickly add a to do somewhere. Um, so remember that there was like a uh, get tile, right? Uh, so this is a testing time, get tile. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. There we go. So the level editor does not allow to draw the tiles by um, dragging the dragging the mouse cursor is that a is that a good way to describe that i mean i, I do understand what it's talking or what it's talking about so whatever all right so we want to introduce like the notion of these brushes right so right now we have a tile brush right and then we want to introduce something like spawn enemy brush um so maybe that's precisely what it's going to be uh, called but i'm not sure if brush is a good word for this kind of thing maybe it's going to be just tool right so it's going to be editor editor tool right uh editor tool and editor tool is going to be just enumeration right and by default this thing is going to be um tiles right so let's introduce something like uh, i don't know Mm, enumeration class editor tool why did I spell cool tool well I mean maybe it's cool who knows uh, so what we have in here is tiles uh, and then we can have enemies right there we go um, that's pretty cool and in the main game in the main game um, so if editor is on right and you press mouse down um, we need to check the editor tool so it's going to be switch uh, editor tool right and the case editor tool mm -hmm, what's going to be that uh, tiles right is it plural yeah it is plural uh -huh. so i'm gonna wrap this entire stuff into the break and then we're gonna just do it like that there we go so here's the tiles otherwise uh editor tool uh enemies enemies and if we are spawning an enemy uh we should just take the mouse uh position right the mouse position and spawn a new enemy there i think that we had a function for spawning enemies yeah you can just spawn an enemy at that specific position uh so what does it do uh, it just creates a new enemy at that specific position okay looks good to me uh spawn enemy at uh mouse world that's it 
So now we need a way to switch between the tools. Um, first of all, maybe it would make sense to just check if this entire thing compiles or not. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's going to be like that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. Mm, so we can do these kind of things. And uh, if I go into this mode, I can uh, place the tiles, but I cannot really... Um, cannot really place the enemies because we cannot switch between the editor tools and whatnot. So, uh, how are we going to be switching between the, um, the editor tools? Uh, I think we're going to introduce like UI elements, uh, some sort of like a buttons, right? Uh, and depending on your current tool, only one is going to be highlighted and you can click on another one and uh, it's going to switch your entire entire thing. So recently I actually started to work on immediate UI library. Uh, I'm HUI, right? I started to work on it because I wanted to learn how immediate UI uh, UIs uh, work. Just a second. Just adjusting my slippers. Um, and it's actually quite an interesting approach to designing UIs. Uh, I'm going to put the link to this stuff in the description, right? So uh, my immediate UI library. Uh, there we go. And I was thinking if I can apply some of the approaches uh, I discovered in this while developing this library to my game. And I think I should be able to. So we can probably create like a special, um, you know, UI element, a special UI element that basically um, draws uh, the tool depending on what tool is selected. Uh, and also checks the uh, events, the mouse position and mouse state to know when it's time to switch between the things. Um, right. But maybe right now, like integrating like a whole immediate UI library into the game is too much work. So what I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm going to actually allow switching between uh, different tools depending on what you press, I suppose. Um, all right, so maybe we can reserve some of these like uh, letters. Mm, we can reserve some of these letters. So for example, if you press F1, it's going to be one tool. If you press another one, it's going to be another tool. Uh, not sure how good of an idea that is, but uh, let's, let's implement that. Yeah, because it's going to be the easiest thing to do. Right, so if you press Z, you set editor uh, tool to editor tool uh, tiles, right? So it's gonna be tiles. And if you press um, X, right? If you press X, uh, we're gonna be doing enemies. There we go. That way we don't really need to render anything. I just wanna see if it works or not. Uh, all right, all right. So I'm going to F3. I press Z and I can place the tile. I press X and I can spawn new enemies, right? I can spawn a lot of them. So it's, it's funny how they're synchronized, right? And if I go in here, I can kill all of them. Uh, funny enough, uh, since we didn't have any way to respawn the enemies, I actually made them to automatically respawn. <laughs> Right, so maybe since I have a way to spawn new enemies, uh, I don't really need that anymore. So I can just spawn as, any, as many enemies as I want. Uh, and it, it's really funny how they synchronize. <laughs> this is because I'm animating that, uh, animating them based on the current time. That's why they're so synchronized. This is actually quite funny. <laughs> All right, so let me actually remove auto respawn. So it's going to be spawn enemy. Um, okay, so this is the first spawn. Uh huh. And I so actually enemy is respawned by itself. So I think I'm gonna just remove this entire thing, uh, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. So if I kill the enemy, it's not respawned, and at any point I can just spawn more enemies, and that seems all right. Uh, all right. So that looks cool, and there we go. So that's pretty cool. Uh, F3, and then I can place some tiles in here. Uh huh. So also, I'm not even sure if zooming should be available in the final game. Maybe zooming should be like a very much development feature. 
but right now it is available in both release and debug. Maybe I'm actually spending too much time trying to separate release and debug, maybe just it's an open source game, right? Just allow everyone to do whatever the hell they want to do and include also development tools. Why not? Though there sh we should still have like a separation between release and debug build because we want to ship and like actual executables that are well optimized so with O3 and building O3 is still like a huge step that's why it is better to like separate this step at least for the optimization so look at how much time it takes to build like a release build we can actually time it uh, it's a pretty small game but release build just takes a lot of time relative to debug of course debug also takes a lot of time um, <laughs> yeah 17 seconds and this is a single compilation unit usually with a single compilation unit it goes a little bit faster because the compiler doesn't have to reparse and reanalyze each individual translation unit because it has only one single translation unit and if you don't know what is a single uh, single compilation unit uh, i'm going to put the wikipedia article about this technique in the description so essentially the idea of that technique is that you, you take all the cpp files you smash them into a single cpp file and you compile that single cpp file so that way it's a little bit faster right uh, but there's pros and cons to all these approaches of course so check out this article single compilation compilation unit there we go all right so and I suppose it would be nice to see some sort of an indication right of what is currently selected what tool is currently selected and I suppose we can probably draw that right we can probably draw that how are we going to be drawing that and that's a good question uh i think we're going to draw it as a panel right so which indicates what is currently selected um all right so it's going to be game hpp um mm -mm. I, I think i need to know the amount of editor tools that we have um so because of that i'm going to introduce the count uh, and the actual type behind this enumeration class is going to be size t. Right. So, um, because I want to have separate icons for each individual tool, and maybe having icons is too much work right now, uh, so maybe we're going to just have colors, right? Maybe we're just going to have colors. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, render. Mm -mm -mm -mm. so here is the render so what we're rendering effectively in here so this is the editor uh aha uh -huh. this is the cursor all right so i want to indicate that this is a cursor uh cursor mm -hmm. so then this is the debug label debug label uh -huh. So this is the cursor, this is the debug label. And on top of that, we want to be able to render the editor tool uh, panel, right? So this is going to be editor tool panel. The question is where we're going to be rendering the editor tool panel. Uh, we can render it somewhere in the left corner. I think it's going to be really convenient. And I suppose it should be only rendered when we are in editor mode so maybe because of that i want to actually push all of that under the editor umbrella right so this is the cursor uh and yeah um tools panel right so all of that is only going to be rendered if you are in the editor mode so debug label is always rendered so you can see that you you can use all of these things so the tool panel um so we have a mouse on the screen here's the mouse on the screen this is a cursor mm -hmm. so here's the screen size mm -hmm. i'll probably need the screen size to actually find the position of that or maybe not no no, no i will need that uh, maybe because of that um uh, well, let me just copy paste it just in case. I think it's going to be all right. There we go. So here is screen size. And then we're going to have a panel position. Right? So it's going to be const outer uh, tools panel position. 
it's essentially minus half of the width minus half of the width okay that's when you're really interesting so screen size uh multiplied by v2 minus half there we go so that's the position minus half of the width minus half of the width cool uh also we should probably add some sort of a padding right so this is going to be something like v2 tools uh tools panel padding there we go tools panel padding um all right once we figured it out we need to actually start iterating through each and individual tool right and to do that we need to do something like this less than editor tool count right uh, and we'll probably have to cast this entire thing into size team but it's not that big of a deal um all right mm -mm -mm. <sighs> editor tool tool static cast editor tool uh -huh. this is going to be i there we go and this one is probably has to be statically cast static cast to size t right so this is going to be size t uh, and now we have a tool and we can determine the tool position right so we need to have something like uh with two tool position maybe it could be also outer this one could be also outer because we're casting it anyway so this is a tool tool position is essentially um to, 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 um, tools panel position tools panel uh panel position um plus v2 i zero right because uh, we're only arranging them horizontally so that means vertically we don't have to change anything and all of that cast it to float and multiply it by uh, the tool size right the single tool size uh, tool button size I would even say so something like this tool uh, button size this is a tool button size and there we go you calculated the position maybe also pl uh, plus tool uh, tools panel padding yeah, yeah we also need to include the padding in here just in case um, so it's going to be plus this is going to be multiply there we go cool and here is the tool position here is the tool position so after that we need to render the actual aabb mm, the actual aabb mm -hmm. all right so let's go to the renderer kill mm, aabb and to, to renderer mm -hmm. So what's the AABB we're going to use in here? The AABB is going to be AABB is going to be uh, tool position, right? So this is the position of the tool and uh, tool button size, right? It's going to be square button. There we go. It's tool button size. So what's going to be the shade? Um, I suppose it's going to depend hand on the specific button right we need some sort of a way to knowing the tool to know the tool color right we need to be able to know the tool color <laughs> so where we can put all that i already feel that the editor should be decomposed from the game as soon as possible right because we're, it's starting to have a lot of this complexity and if we're going to be not including editor into the release build maybe we better like put it into a separate class that just operates on the game itself right um yeah, yeah, yeah. i think i'm gonna put it to do for that in here um mm -mm -mm. Uh, decouple, decouple editor uh, from the game. There we go. So maybe I'm going to put it in here, and there we go. So I need a static array, right? A static array that just holds the editor colors, 
so let's introduce something like this. So RGBA, uh, and it's going to be completely static, of course. Maybe it's going to be external. It could be actually internal to the game itself, if you know what I mean. Uh, so it's going to be static, uh, RGBA, RGBA, uh, editor to color, and it's basically uh, editor to uh, editor to count and I need a lot of conversion between those things so I will probably have to do a static cast the uh, C++ enumerations are really awkward to be fair when it comes to these kind of things and of course um, I cannot use designated initialization like in C, right? So because in C++ it's a GNU extension. In C, as far as I know, it's part of the standard, but in C++ you cannot just easily do these kind of things. So we could probably do something like this stuff in here, but that means we have to do initialization. And it's just like really awkward, but eh. eh. Okay, I think for now, since we don't really have that many tools, we could probably do a switch case right uh we probably can do like a simple switch case in here and it just doesn't really matter that much all right so it's going to be something like render mm. so the caller the caller the caller the caller um Mm, editor tool uh, color is going to be tool and uh, what's going to be the texture what kind of texture we're going to use in there i think we're going to use the texture of uh, white rectangles so we can just set the color um, so it's going to be atlas get uv it's going to be just zero and program i suppose it's going to be uh, screen program right screen program asset right so because we want to render all of that on this screen so and we'll need to implement this function uh, so right so this is the function editor tool color so you accept the editor tool right so you accept the editor tool and it gives you the color and uh, let's quickly implement this entire thing in here uh, and obviously this kind of stuff has to be in a separate thing so if in depth uh, something release right something release mm -hmm. and if uh, something release okay so we're gonna do switch case uh, and we're gonna switch case upon these two things uh, so it's gonna be case uh, editor editor tool tiles yeah, tiles and uh, the tiles is gonna be um, I suppose green we can just do something RGBA uh, green mm -hmm. uh, for the enemies we're gonna use probably blue maybe red let's use red for everything else we're gonna panic uh, maybe we're gonna put unreachable unreachable uh, okay and i'm gonna put uh, the name what is going on the name in here there we go uh unreachable unreachable um okay let's try to compile this entire thing Mm -hmm. Though I have a pretty cool idea actually. Oh, uh -huh. oh I'm I'm just waiting for, for the release build. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> let's do the debugging. That's why we're separating them, by the way. That is precisely why we're separating them. Editor tool uh, count. Oh yeah, yeah. So we also need to take a look uh, at the count. So it's going to be case editor tool count. Uh, right and then also the default and in both of the cases is going to be aids uh, unreachable right this is unreachable straight up whatever um, should not be reachable uh, anyway tools panel padding okay so let's go to the uh, to the config file padding is going to be uh, let's say it's going to be 20 right mm -hmm. anything else uh, Oh yeah, C classic static cast uh, size t zero. 
Uh, to, 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 tools button size, okay. Uh -huh, tools button size, let's actually set it to something like 200. Mm -hmm. Do we need anything else? And um, yeah, this thing has to be const. Uh -huh. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, duplicate cases. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, okay, so we didn't catch the last case in here. It's going to be editor tool uh, count. Let's put it in here. Let's let it fall through. Uh, const count, not const. Mm -hmm. All right, so if I switch to here, there we go, here are the buttons. You cannot click on them, uh, but we can use them to indicate what is the current tool. So first of all, let me let me rerun it one more time because I want to adjust their padding, their sizes, because they're too, too big, as you can see. So, uh, yep, yep, yep. And let's go to the vars conf. So uh, here they are. So let's actually make them 100, right? Uh, yep, and the padding could be actually a little bit bigger in my opinion, uh, maybe 15, yeah, I think it's all right. So yeah, th this is roughly how I want, it, uh, want them to be. And here is the thing, essentially when, if the tool is not selected, right, if the tool is not selected, I don't want uh, this tool to have any sort of color. So uh, we want to be able to see what is currently selected. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So we're rendering it with this specific color but we're only going to be rendering this thing if the tool equal to the editor tool right otherwise we want to be rendering it with uh, let's say white do we even have white we can actually do something like this right and it's going to be straight up white um <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So I go in here, and as you can see, this one is selected green. If I switch to enemies, this one is red now, uh, right? And that means I'm spawning enemies. I switch into this one, I'm spawning tiles. So it's a pretty rudimentary like selecting tool. It, it doesn't even allow you to click on these things, but at least it indicates what is currently selected. And the cool thing in here is that it makes it relatively easy to add new things in here, right? So for instance, you can add foo. Right, and if you try to recompile, of course, it's going to fail in some of the places, uh, specifically um, here, right? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, right now, foo is not going to do anything. Uh, and here, we need to check, we need to select uh, a special color for, uh, for the foo. So, the special color for the foo is going to be just... Uh, I don't know, blue, right, this is going to be blue. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Right, and if you switch to editor mode, now you have three of them. Uh, you cannot switch for the uh, to the blue one, uh, but it's there. It's super easy to add new tools. You just add a new enumeration and uh, it integrates that into this entire system. And one of the things we want to be able to do, we want to be able to click on these uh, tools to select them. Mm -hmm. Uh, two, 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 two. So let me put it like that. I, I don't even know what to put that, but so the editor, the editor tools panel, uh, panel does not allow to select uh, tools by clicking on their icons. Right, another one is going to be uh, editor tools panel buttons don't have any icons on them right so that's another thing and we could probably implement something interesting like uh, if you are in the editor mode and you're scrolling the mouse wheel uh, you would switch the tool but then we're gonna actually collide with um with zoom in so maybe i'm not gonna do that so but uh at this we're having something right let me quickly remove full um right <laughs> okay, so we need to remove that, and we need to remove that, and there we go. We won't have any um, any third button anymore. As you can see, now we have only only two of them. So yeah, so that is a pretty pretty pogue. 
Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, so let's do a committee committee. Uh, and what did we do in here? Uh, I think we straight up introduced the editor tool panel. Yeah, that's precisely what we did. Uh, editor tool panel. Right, and let's push that right into the repo and create a pull request and all of this jazz. Because we also have a bunch of to dos. Uh, I actually introduced a lot of to dos in here, so I need to snitch them up. Uh, all right. So if you don't know what is a snitch, snitch is a special tool that I use to collect to dos in, in my source code and report them into the issue tracker. Uh, so if you're interested in this kind of thing, check it out in here uh, in the description. Right. Okay, so let's create the pull request. Mm, so what was that? Um, in game level editor. Okay. Uh, rough. Okay. Rough sketch of the in game level editor. Right. And this entire thing is going to close the issue 90. Uh, there we go. There we go. Yusu, Yusu, Yusu. Koboi Dusu. Uh huh. To, 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 to. And let's actually snitch up all of these to do's. So it's going to be snitch, report, prepend body, introduced in uh, 95, 95, and let's go through all the to do's. And just a special type index instead of that one, okay. Um, special type wars for index, okay. Uh, L does not allow draw the tiles by dragging the mouse around. Yeah, it is true. Uh, this one, we should not do that. It's a false positive. Uh, decouple editor from the game. That, yeah, that sounds pretty useful. Uh, does not allow to select tools by clicking them. Yes, that's quite important. I, I, mean, I mean, yes. Uh, buttons don't have any icons on them. We do need icons. Uh, support string types. We also need that. And there we go. It will report all of these to-dos as issues to the to the issue tracker. And if we take a look at the original pull request, here are all of the issues that we reported from the to-dos and we link them up to the pull request in which those issues were introduced. So, and for each individual issue, Snitch created a separate to-do and, and a commit and it associated uh, an issue with the, with the to-do. And uh, the next thing we need to do, we need to just push that right into the repo and everything is gonna be interconnected. All right, so I guess today was a pretty productive stream. I'm really happy that we managed to introduce uh, a level editor. Now I can add tiles uh, during the runtime and stuff like that. That's actually super cool. Uh, so thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one and I see you um, on the next video. Um, I think like tomorrow, tomorrow is Monday. That means tomorrow we're probably going to be doing a web development, but I can't promise anything. Anything can change at any moment. So uh, yeah, check out the description, check out the links in the description. And uh, I got to go. Thanks everyone for watching. Love you. Mwah.